no. of all human infectious diseases, which one is the most deadly? Maybe you're already thinking about SARS, swine flu, Ebola epidemic that ravaged West Africa not too long ago, or even the most recent Zika infections. All these diseases have something in common. They originate from animals. I work in East Africa as a veterinarian on diseases that move from animals to man. And I've come across one that I think is the most, arguably the most deadly, rabies. It's caused by a bullet like virus that is transmitted between humans and animals through bites from rabid animals, often the domestic dog. Once the dog gets the virus, man's best friend is turned into a ferocious foe. And once you're beaten, the virus starts moving up the peripheral nervous system up to the brains. And once there, the manifestation of the disease begins with confusion, agitation, then violence, then a fear of water referred to as hydrophobia. You'll be surprised to know that for 120 years you have had an effective vaccine against rabies. The question is, why do we still have people dying the horrible, terrifying deaths from rabies? There are three things that are responsible for this. Misconceptions, and I want to address them today. The first one is that rabies is a small public health problem. Every year, countries send their data on the people that have died from different diseases to the World Health Organization. The information that goes there about rabies, the numbers are dismal. Few of them, making it look like rabies is not a big disease. Now we have evidence that those numbers are up to 200 times less. It's a tip of the iceberg. And the reasons for that are many. One, rabies infects communities in marginalized areas where health access, access to health care is actually not good. And because the disease takes up to a month before you can start getting the manifestation of the signs, often the physician and the patient can't connect the bite wound that is already healed, the disease that is manifesting, and therefore they end up declaring it something else. And there are many diseases, for instance, cerebral malaria, that present in the same way, and a lot of the patients are declared to have cerebral malaria. When calculated correctly, every year, 59,000 people around the world, most of them in Africa and Asia, die from rabies. Now, if you put it into context with the diseases that we know about, that's many times the peak deaths that are due to other infections that grab the world's attention. Now, if rabies is a big public health problem, what other factors are causing these horrible, terrifying deaths? The second notion is that wildlife play a big, important role in the maintenance of the rabies virus. And therefore, for people that work on the disease, it feels like it's an exercise in futility, that if you eliminate the disease from dogs that transmit it, then wildlife are going to reintroduce the disease. I mean, it's true that a few countries in the West have wildlife variants of the rabies virus. But the studies that you have done in Africa show that the virus that circulates among the dogs is the same virus that circulates in wildlife. And importantly, studies, for instance, in Serengeti National Park have shown that if you vaccinate dogs around the park, you do not only reduce the numbers of rabies cases to zero in dogs, but also in wildlife. The third misconception is around the stray dogs that you see roaming around most of Africa. Now, these dogs, many of them have owners. And once you have gone out to do mass dog vaccinations, we find out that if you tell the people in time, even the dogs at Rome will be made available for vaccination. The problem with this notion is that you take away all the efforts that would be taken to mass dog vaccinations and put them into things like baiting and shooting of stray dogs. 
In places like Bali, in Indonesia, they have tried that and found that the more they shot the dogs, the more they tried killing them, the more the rabies spread. It does not work. The only solution that works in terms of rabies elimination is actually mass dog vaccination. The good news is, although rabies is lethal, it's not the most infectious disease. Now, people that work in disease often determine the infectiousness of a disease using something they call R0, which is the number of secondary cases one infective case will give in a population that has not had the disease before. Now, the higher that number, the bigger, it, 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 the, bigger the problem is for you to eliminate it, or the, more, the bigger the proportion of the population that you need to vaccinate. For rabies, it's actually small, it's 1.2 meaning that if you wanted to bring the disease down, you only need to vaccinate 70% of the population. I participate in organizing mass dog campaigns in East Africa. And I can see the enthusiasm with which small boys and girls are bringing their dogs to be vaccinated and keep the disease away from humans. It is working. That enthusiasm, I hope, can be taken up by governments and people in rabies endemic countries, and one day, let's make Kenya and the world a rabies-free place. Thank you.